So Black Pigeon Speaks is um, a dude who lives in Japan and um, hmm, what's the best way of putting this? He's alt-right. That's probably the easiest thing I can say to describe him, okay? Very simple. He's an alt-right guy. I saw this video. I mean, <laughs> some of these thumbnails. Look at this. Three hours response. New male twinkification intensifies and this dude's doing soy face. The great reset. I mean, that's just a bit creepy. Anyway, he released this video today. Why the cult of victimhood will destroy America. Oh, let's watch it and find out. When one looks at 2020, besides the controlled implosion of the global economy, the dystopian overreach of governments stripping their citizens of their rights and freedoms, and of course, the ever-increasing censorship on speech that's meant to suppress the dissent of the new world being created, what's clear is that the Western world... How long until he's being victimized when he's already complaining about getting his speech restricted or something? And the United States in particular is broken. As a society, it's disintegrating into two mutually hostile camps that can no longer even communicate, let alone negotiate with each other. While there are many reasons for this, one very important aspect that is little understood, and it's not the culture war, because the culture war is the result of the change in culture over the past several decades. And Wait. <laughs> it is the rise of the culture of victimhood. Wait, hang on a sec. No, the culture war isn't anything to do with changing cultures. Like the culture, the culture war is when um, like the working class are basically chuck steaks like hungry dogs, but the steaks are made out of like bullshit nonsense that doesn't really mean anything. Like, uh, you know, what the fucking, uh, like... <laughs> The tit size of the latest Mortal Kombat characters, or some shit like that, you know. Um, or they can be like we, like I was speaking about earlier. So you can have a um, a serious issue that exists. This is so the systemic inequalities that exist between um, different races in the United States, for example, serious issue that needs to be discussed and needs to be addressed. But it's then tra but then it's transformed into a culture war issue where you get people arguing about whether people were right to boo someone that took the knee at Millwall Football Stadium this month. And it's like we've moved so far away from the conversation about what it should be, racial injustice. And now we're talking about people booing at some random football match in the UK fucking somewhere. And, and it just is that transformation. That's what the culture war stuff is. I don't know what he means about, oh, the culture is transforming. I don't know. Let's get into this more. Oh. What the hell is this? This is new. A big thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. <laughs> oh my god, they were... <laughs> By the way, if you want hey. more solid theory grounding for the manufacturing consent stuff... Antonio Gramsci's 1926 prison notebooks have some really good stuff about ideological hegemony and the role that mass media plays in perpetuating it. Oh, hey, hey Sape Tanuki. That's a lovely, I love the, the meme. Thank you very much for the three dollars. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, I've not actually read any Gramsci, but that sounds really interesting. Um, also, I'm going to read the board as well. I really want to read Society of the Spectacle because I think I think that would quite that would resonate with me, too. But yeah. I'll take that recommendation as well. <laughs> Dead meme. Okay, listen. No thing. I'm going to be honest with you, okay? You're getting timed out because you're a fucking moron, all right? Okay, we're doing it. We're timing you out. You're getting put in timeout for a bit. There we go. See you later. See you later, mate. <laughs> Raid Shadow Legends. I mean... Look, I'm okay. Can I be real? I don't criticize anyone for like doing a sponsorship or whatever, okay? But like the point that I want to make, the point I want to make is like Raid Shadow Legends will literally sponsor anyone. They don't care. They sponsor Black Midget Speaks. Are you kidding me? We'll skip past all this anyway. Does he actually play it? Half an hour. You play it on your cell or on oh your desktop, God. and it's really easy to get started and make serious progress. It also has amazing graphics and really neat gameplay mechanics. 
Also, really does Raid it. just released their biggest update ever, and the main event is the Doom Tower plus three champion bulwark, fifty gems, an XP booster, some it is a bit builds, and an ancient. It is something of an awkward tonal shift to go from like, oh, here's why the cult of victimhood will destroy America, but let me just tell you about Raid Shadow Legends. Let me tell you about how great Raid Shadow Legends is. Do you know what Fly Society? Okay, there's a streamer that was recently sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends and they asked me as a favor to play for the tutorial because they get some sort of benefit if people play for the tutorial. So I said, yeah, okay, no problem. I'll play it for the tutorial for you. It was honestly like just terrible, just so stupid. And you could see how predatory the dynamics were. Like you had these gems. There were some fucking gems knocking about. You can buy some gems. Like, fuck it, I don't know, stupid. Anyway, let's continue. In 1993, art critic Robert Hughes published a chillingly prophetic book called The Culture of Complaint, in which he prognosticated that the U.S. was doomed to become an increasingly and infantilized culture of victimhood. It was against the backdrop of the just-emerging grievance industry that now has a chokehold on correct discourse. Well, actually, can we just point out, right, that, like, these people have been talking endlessly there's always videos about like the end of civilization as we know it the downfall of america the downfall of this country downfall of that country this country's coming to an end tomorrow Be we warned it's going to happen ah we're going to have a downfall when's it happening can i put the date in my diary have you got a date for me because you're keeping me hanging on here for ages you've been talking about this for years downfall of civilization let's fucking go then let's get on with it come on I know it's so yeah it's you're right pump action musket it is very depressing it's very depressing i don't understand how how these people can like engage with this content and not just feel thoroughly fucking sad about the fact that their civilization is going to end in fact in fact okay okay what i would actually say is that i think this content sometimes does prey on people who have got um you know say depression for example right it did with me anyway like you know i don't have any data to say right this is exactly how it is okay but i'm going to do an anecdote andy here so so you know when when i was very depressed personally i that's when i got into all this stuff and i found some sort of comfort in it do you know what i mean and i wonder i wonder like i wonder if that's a pattern it'd be interesting it'd be interesting to look at like um, that sort of stuff and how it, how how mental health issues relate to this and how people can you know be 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 pulled into this sort of stuff because of other issues that they're facing in their life you know like and and that link between people being alienated and then this is the answers that they find do you know what i mean in the anglosphere as well as much of the western world today victimhood culture is impossible to miss and examples of adherence to its values are everywhere some are offended by others' hairstyles. Some are offended by music or the way men sit on public transportation. Some are offended by voice characterizations in animated films, while others are traumatized by Halloween costumes. Well, how I mean, hang on a sec. I know, I know that he's talking about this. I know that he's talking about this from the perspective of the, um, you know, yeah, man spreading. What are these examples? I know it's silly, right? Um, like, are there some people that complain about this on social media? I mean, sure. <laughs> but I don't know. Just seems a bit silly to get so worked up about it. And the funny thing is, yeah, it's 2016 again. Some of this stuff you could point to, like the anti SJWs getting like really upset about things as well. Like, for example, when there's a character in a video game that happens to be a trans person and how they react to that. Or when a voice actor says, hey, I'm white, but I'm playing a black character in a cartoon. That seems kind of silly to me, so I'm going to step down so a black person can come in and actually take the role. They fucking lose their minds at that shit. This guy traumatizes me. How do you explain this? Well, it's a change in culture, and this change has been examined in a study titled Microaggression and Moral Cultures by the sociologists Bradley Campbell and Jason Manning in the Journal of Comparative Sociology. Campbell and Manning argue that the United States and the Western world for that matter is now transitioning into a victimhood culture. 
Microaggressions and what's this? Microaggression and moral cultures. Let's have a look. Is this it? Is this the same thing? Bradley Campbell, okay. Campus activists and others might refer to slights of one's ethnicity or other cultural characteristics as microaggressions, and they might use various forums to publicise them. Here we examine the phenomenon by drawing from Donald Black's theories on conflict and from cross-cultural studies of conflict and morality. We argue that this behaviour resembles other conflict tactics in which the aggrieved um, actively seek the support of third parties, as well as those that focus on oppression. We identify the social conditions associated with each feature and we discuss how the rise of these conditions has led to a large scale moral change, such as the emergence of a victimhood culture that is distinct from the honour culture and dignity cultures of the past. <laughs> Wait, this is from 2014. Is that, does that mean it's from 2014? Have I got that right? Is that right? Yeah, this was written in 2014. <laughs> right? Am I am I right? Hang on. Am I right in saying this was written in 2014? Jesus Christ, this is a hefty document. But this is the thing, right? Okay, listen. I think it was 2014. Same time twenty ten. Yeah, look, this came out in twenty fourteen. This is this is uh, is it peer reviewed? I, I, I don't know. I'll send listen. I'll put the link in chat, and if anyone if anyone can like wants to have a quick look at it, you're more than welcome to. Because obviously, like you know, it's very difficult. But here's here's the thing. Okay. Here's my problem. So it's very difficult for me to sit here and go through a forty eight page study and analyze it and talk about it for a number of reasons. Right. So. I'll be really honest here like I don't I don't have the like ability necessarily unless I really sat down and looked through it and talked to people and stuff to really analyze this and to really give you you know I'd find it difficult to come and say hey this is what this study means this is what it's all about this is what it's suggesting here are its pros here are its cons here are its flaws you know this is what we can ascertain from this right um but here's the thing, okay? Here's the thing. I'm happy to admit that openly to you. But this motherfucker, we've got a, th we've got a 13 minute video, two of which have been taken up with a fucking ad for Raid Shadow Legends, so call it 11 minutes, and now he's probably gonna spend a bit of time explaining this study to us. Well, we'll see, we'll see, but it's a 48 page fucking study. So. I, I, I'm struggling to see how he's going to be able to break it down in an accurate way that well represents the content of the study. But let's find out. Now, I'm going to paraphrase the ideas distilled in this study uh, okay. as broken down by several other authors to give you a general okay. understanding Here we of go. this very interesting thesis. Historically, in honor cultures, people, men, men, maintained their honor by responding to insults, slights, violations of their rights by, quote, self-help violence, closed quote. Generally, honor cultures exist where the rule of law is weak. In honor cultures, people protected themselves, their families, and their property through having a reputation for swift violence. What Think of fuck? one man slapping the other man in the face with his glove and demanding satisfaction, pistols at dawn as it were. But things began to change in the 19th century as most Western societies began. Okay, so is this, is this like a, um, is this like a, an unironic, like reactionary take in terms of talking about how things used to be, how we used to do things with honor? Yeah, it sounds like Evo psych. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's difficult to say. The other problem that you've got as well, um, You know, is if you look at this, like they never, they never put, like he's not even linked to the study. He's not even linked to the study. And look, 
I don't have a problem with like you know if you do a video I, I i just think if you do a video essay if you're doing a video essay right you should you should like you should have like sources right at the very least i think we can agree that if you do a video about one study surely you would link it in the replies no we got the raid shadow legend stuff bitcoins bit shoe yeah nothing nothing okay oh okay fair enough this is black pigeon speaks yeah and the moral transition toward dignity cultures in which all citizens were legally endowed with equal rights in such societies persons property and rights are defended by recourse to third parties usually courts police and so forth that if necessary they will wield violence on the citizens behalf <sighs> dignity cultures practice tolerance and are much more peaceful than honor cultures by the way campbell and manning describe Wait, how the culture of victimhood Wait, in which what, people what, are encouraged what, 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 to respond what, 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 is usually courts police and so forth that if necessary they will wield violence on the citizens behalf Dignity cultures practice tolerance and are much more peaceful than honor cultures, by the way. Campbell and Manning describe how the culture of victimhood in which people are encouraged to respond to even the slightest unintentional offense, as people used to do during the period where honor culture was dominant, but now they also want to appeal for help to powerful others including employers or administrative bodies to whom they must make their case that they've been victimized and this gives rise to intense efforts to identify oneself as fragile and an aggrieved victim critics of the culture of victimhood are often attacked as abusers themselves perpetuating a culture of harm and assault frequently the response i mean I, I feel i mean it's no surprise to find out this study came out in 2014 because this does feel very much like a 2015 2016 talking point of like microaggressions like this discourse just feels old and and can i be like is there an issue with like people talking about microaggressions just because I haven't witnessed it doesn't mean it hasn't happened, to be clear. But I'm sat here thinking, you know, in my entire time that I've been like operating, been an online lefty operative, okay, I, I can't even think of a single time that someone has complained about microaggressions. Like, yeah, it's like a dead meme, right? But like i do think obviously like there's some there's some element in there of like you know so let's say for example there's someone who has got a certain color skin but they, they just you know they're they're born in america they just you know were, were, were socialized born in america so they they learn um kind of like uh like english like any anyone else would um like and then and then someone meets them and says oh you speak good you speak good english for for you know the fact that you're not from here or whatever right it's that sort of thing that was considered a microaggression right if i remember correctly it was it was basically like to, to be honest okay would anyone agree that like whilst whilst there is some truth in the idea that you can kind of be insulting to someone in in a racialized way or a bigoted way without realizing it without meaning to right there's definitely that phenomenon that occurs would you agree that the term microaggression was always really bad branding like I've just thought of it then, but like microaggression actually has always been quite shit branding. I don't know. That's the perspective I've got anyway. Because it sounds. It sounds like, oh, I don't know. It sounds like it's worse than it is. I don't know. I don't really like. It's not like I'm saying, oh, it's bad to use the term or something like that. But but it's like, I don't know. It always has sounded like quite severe when it's like, it's micro. I don't know. How about a face to the voice? What do you mean by that? Anyway, let's continue. 
battled critic is to assert that they too are victims. Men criticized as sexist for challenging radical feminism defend themselves as victims of reverse sexism. People criticized for being unsympathetic proclaim their own history of victimhood. A very good example of this is that in courts during the sentencing process, it's very common, even regular now, for felons to proclaim their own history of victimization and how it contributed to their harmful illegal actions. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Criminals will commit acts because of their issues. I mean, sure. That's just a true fact. <laughs> In our culture of victimhood, victims can be excused for victimizing others, for taking away the rights of others, taking away others' freedoms. Okay, is this from this study? This study, this study, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't have time to go over the 48 pages now. This study seems kind of sus. All those sociological terms are very misleading in everyday language. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, oh, this, oh, I don't know. If this is from the study, this just sounds like, this sounds like some fucking, like, anti-SJW shit. I don't know. Economy, because they were victims themselves, and they were doing this in the service of their own victimhood. Maybe listen to that part again, if you have to. And of course, this new moral culture comes complete with its own vocabulary. Nouns or isms plus privilege. Can't have a new moral culture without isms. Trigger, trigger warnings, microaggressions. Oh my God, wait a second, have I got it wrong? Is this like a re-upload? Is this, is this a re-upload from like 20 fucking 16 or some shit? Premiered on 12th of December 2020. How? How is this a video that came out two days ago? What the fuck is this? Oh my god. Discourse has moved on so much from all this. Safe space and all the other usual buzzwords. Hateful, binary, intersectional. Speak. <laughs> wait. Wait, hang on. Hang safe on. space and all the other usual buzzwords. Hateful, Binary. Bin binary. Binary is a hateful. Is it what? What did you say? Buzzword. Binary is a buzzword, apparently. <laughs> what the fuck? And also, I guarantee you, this fucker couldn't tell you what intersection actually means. Intersectional. Speak truth to power. Solidarity. Progressive oppression. Social what? justice. How ableism. Are these... <laughs> how, I... is ab how is ableism a buzzword? What the fuck? Identify group and community. Oh my group god! Plus community, journey, and there's others that I can't quite remember at the moment. But this new paradigm and its vocabulary used oh by George Carlin called the soft language or the new speak that's being formed. How dare this piece of shit invoke George Carlin? Jo George Carlin would fucking hate black pigeon speak around the emerging culture of victimhood. When the victims publicize microaggressions, or the perceived victims, or the self-proclaimed victims, publicize that they How been... the fuck is he invoking George Carlin? I would defend to the death his right to do everything he does. The thing that I, that I find unusual, and it's, you know, it's not a criticism so much, but his targets are underdogs, and comedy traditionally has picked on people in power, people who abuse their power. Uh, women and gays and immigrants are kind of, to my way of thinking, underdogs. And, uh, you know, he ought to be careful because he's Jewish. And a lot of the people who want to pick on these kind of groups, the Jews are on that list a little further. You got women, gays, gypsies, blah, 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 blah. And then suddenly you find Jews. And, and Andrew, suddenly Andrew's arrested. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I mean, obviously he should do what he wants. And... Uh, why does he get away with it, do you think, then? Well, we have never a... laughed at jokes about the Well, he's war. appealing. I think he's appealing largely. I think his core audience are young white males who are threatened by these groups. I think a lot of these guys aren't sure of their manhood because that's a problem when you're going in through adolescence. You know, am I really? Am I? Could I be? I hope I'm not. Well, I am. And the women who assert themselves and are competent are a threat to these men. 
and so are immigrants in terms of jobs and and uh, and, and the so that's world. why we as an audience unbelievable I, you say we i don't think you're I mean, in no, 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 but i, I think you're collective that, we. i think that's what what is at the core of that experience that takes place in these arenas there's a certain uh a, you know a, a sharing of of uh, anger and rage at, at, at these at these targets and i'm sure andrew isn't that angry at them i'm sure he's playing it as a comic You really think George Carlin would have any agreement whatsoever with this fucking guy? Holy shit. God, it's incredible, isn't it? It's incredible, the fact that they can just fucking invoke people at will like this. Fuck me. In microaggressed against, they call attention to what they see as the deviant behavior of others. In doing so, they are calling to attention their own victimization. Indeed. Many ways of attracting the attention and sympathy of third parties is to emphasize or exacerbate the, quote, low status of the aggrieved, closed quote. People portray themselves as oppressed by the powerful, as damaged, as disadvantaged and needy. What many find shocking about the culture of victimhood is that it involves rejecting previously conventional moral injunctions to ignore insults recognize the good intentions of those who accidentally give offense and be charitable and civil toward those whom we defend. disagree but now they instead illustrate a high sensitivity to slight these self-proclaimed victims they illustrate a high sensitivity to slight such that verbal offenses or even disagreements merit a serious response at least in their minds <laughs> so who cares i i don't know i just i feel i feel like um i mean are are there people who like like are like this like yeah maybe it just feels like there's this strong one to, to be honest like i think i think that like you can look at other critiques of like social media and and how social media is used and stuff like that and get a much richer experience than watching this like i don't know it just seems so silly to me we are becoming a culture of victimhood well in fact everybody should as this mentality is not only self-destructive it's totally a polarizing force within society this kind of mentality makes it almost impossible to resolve disputes both social and political as it removes the necessary give and take as well as being able to agree to disagree and turns every difference into a battle between good and the good is always, oh, excuse me, the good is always us, and evil, them. And here is where we find ourselves in 2020. Consider a 2014 study in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, which examined why opposing groups, including Democrats and Republicans, found compromise so difficult. Researchers concluded that there was a widespread political motivation attribution asymmetry in both sides and what that means is both sides attributed their own aggressive behavior to be love but the opposite sides to be hatred today millions of americans i feel i feel what he's doing here. he's kind of weaving together these kind of disparate sources of information and studies and just using it to like kind of uh, weave weave this kind of narrative of his own like weave weave this kind of uh i don't know <laughs> do you know what i mean you know i just i kind of look at this and i just think it's, it's obvious like the because the, the worst thing you can do so the worst thing you can do is is go into like read a study or read anything really if if you go into reading something assuming it's going to um like back up your pre-existing biases or pre-existing beliefs that's like the worst way that you can go into reading a text because obviously you're not going to be going into it with an open mind right you're going to be going into it with a preconception and that could have a big influence on how you actually analyze and read and interpret the data and it just seems like he's wanting to pull together i mean the fact the fact that he wants to do the shit about microaggressions and the best source he's got is his fucking uh, this is totally unrelated really but he's going on about fucking like this one 2014 study that someone did about microaggressions like i don't know maybe it'd be interesting if to see if there's any critique of that study or if there's anything that's been written about it 
believe that their side, Democrat or Republican, is basically benevolent, while the other side is evil and out to get them. And it, this is an important point because the practitioners of victimhood culture also see their perceived oppressors as not somebody they disagree with, but as evil, thus generally seeking to restrict expression in order to protect their sensibilities and what they advocate. Victimhood claims the right to say who is and who is not allowed to speak. In that, anyone that voices an opposing view is an oppressor. All speech not agreed upon is hate speech. Questions or comments such as, where are you from? You speak English very well. Oh, you're a very interesting looking person. All are standard examples of microaggressions. And even if no ill intent is meant. Yeah, what, what is this? Who is this person? But yeah, I mean, like I say, it just, this is the 2016 video, I swear to God. The discourse has moved like so far beyond the microaggression discourse, no? But even so, even so, like, yeah, I, you know, <laughs> I do think that like, it's fair enough if, so, if, if you, if you say something to someone as a compliment, but you, you say it in a way that comes off as like, a bit insulting like i feel like i feel like these people always overcomplicate it right like for example with intersectionality they talk about like oh there's this oppression olympics with intersectionality and yada 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 but in reality intersectionality is just recognizing things <laughs> like that's it if you if you really if you really break it down to its simplest form it's just about recognizing things right and it's the same with microaggressions like it's just about sort of understanding that you can say something in a certain way that has got some sort of background, some racially charged background that you don't really think about, but you say it and that's it really. That's about it. You don't need to make this big deal out of it. You don't need to make this big song and dance out of it. You know, you just need to make an effort to, hey, you know, consider the fact that you might be thinking you're paying someone a compliment, but actually you're doing it in a way that comes across really fucking badly and you sound like a twat. It's this idea that like it's so it's so egregious to think that you would have to try and moderate your speech in certain circumstances and engage in some sort of like self censorship or whatever. But the reality is we do that all the fucking time. We self censor constantly. You know? Yeah, you don't swear in front of your grandma, you know? You don't call your boss at work a cunt, right? I mean, I hope you don't to his face and we probably get in trouble. I don't imagine you've got that kind of relationship, but you're not gonna go into your boss and go, right, you fucking twat, fuck you. Like, yeah, there is a degree of censorship that you engage in. So sometimes if you're speaking to someone, maybe you, you know, even when amongst friends, you'll have this. You know, think about friends that you've got. Even with friends, you have an agreement sometimes. Wait, maybe these people are just always rude to people who don't have power over them. Yeah, true. But, you know, amongst your friends, there'll sometimes be a topic that's a bit too sensitive, so you agree not to talk about it, and that's it, you move on. Or someone might make a joke that's taken the wrong way, and you go, oh shit, I don't really like that actually, that's a bit upsetting to me or whatever. And, and you sort it out and you move on. This is just like normal human interaction, right? Like, there's, there's nothing, there's no law against you doing a microaggression, right? You just might end up upsetting someone. And if you make a mistake and someone points it out, you go, okay, yeah, sorry, I didn't realize. I'm sorry about that. And then that's it, you move on. It's not this big grandiose thing that happens. Now, some of these problems are exacerbated on social media. Sure, absolutely, there's problems on social media, but the, that is more related, less so to people being individually fucking whatever, and the, the systems that exist that perpetuate the issues on Twitter, and the fact that Twitter is designed to get us hooked and keep us on there. Like, this is the thing with these people, is they'll point out issues, but it's always about the individual, it's always about the person, it's always about the person, rather than, like, you know. See what I mean? I don't know. Makes sense? Hopefully it does. Let's continue. Or meant to be caused the over sensitiveness God, these and videos. the urge to be slighted by the practitioners of victimhood responds 
internally and externally with malice, rage, and furious emotional distress. Now, of course, there has been criticism of this study by those that were triggered unironically by its title and have felt they felt a... Oh, so everyone that's criticizing it is triggered. How convenient. ...pressed by its content. And I'll and Big also Red again. a link to... Fucking Big Red. I mean, fuck me. What year are we in? ...rebuttals to this study in the description. But let's be clear what this means. Microaggressions Wait, basically equate... ...mically by its title and have felt... They felt oppressed by its content. And I'll also leave a link to the rebuttals to this study in the description. But let's be clear what this means. Microaggressions basically equate an easily offended person. Safe spaces are segregation with another name. Trigger warnings equals censorship. Privilege equals moral demerits within this new moral construct. Whoa. The rise of victim culture morality that pits groups against each other does not bode well for future social and political stability. No matter what race, ethnicity, gender, or orientation, all that matters in this new moral code is victimhood, and always the need for oppressors will arise. And anyone can get the rug of victimhood torn out from underneath them and cancelled for causing the slightest of offenses. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing. Also, remember to download yeah, Ray just like, oh, Rachel Legends. Shadow Legends. I don't know. That was just like. That was just dog shit. I still can't get over the fact he thinks it's okay to say to someone of a different race. Oh, you're interesting looking. Yeah, I know. These people, I don't understand how these people have normal day-to-day -day interactions with people. Like, you know, obviously when you go out, you, you're gonna, you're gonna like make an effort not to piss people off, right? How much do you want to bet he doesn't give a solution? Yeah, yeah, of course. If that video, that study's so old as well. I don't know, that was, whole thing was just painful. That was just painful to watch. It's kind of boring as well. It's just kind of boring. <sighs> just seem like content for the content gods. Install raid for free, okay. It has already destroyed it. Everyone is so... Okay, this is funny. Everyone is so busy being a victim. So he's complaining about people being a victim. While the CCP lasts all the way to the UN. These people are fucking obsessed with the fucking China. It's ridiculous.